Okay, hey, Paul, are you ready to pay attention? Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Yes! Are you ready? <laughs> are you ready? He's recording. You ready? He's recording. Hi, everyone. In this lesson, we're going to talk about comma rules. So there's more comma rules than what I have on here, but I've only selected five, and then we'll, we'll work with some other comma rules later on. Okay, so right now I feel that five is plenty to focus on and figure out. So the first comma rule that we're gonna talk about today, a comma needs to be placed between two adjectives with equal ranking. Do you understand what that means? They have the same standing. They have the same weight in the sentence. You can swap them back and forth. They can exchange positions and the sentence sounds just as good either way. Now that kind of adjective, they are called coordinate adjectives. Say that with me. Coordinate adjectives. adjectives. Okay, so now, so you're understanding what coordinate means Co means with, an ordinate means order, all right? And remember, adjectives, and I want you to remember what um, the AD means. It's in lots and lots of words. It is, it means toward. So you guys remember that. AD means what? Toward. Ject means to? Throw. You know how I always remember ject? is eject. How can, you, how can you forget what eject means? You're being thrown out of a plane, right? I never forget what ject is because of that. So your AD means toward. You're being thrown toward a noun, okay? Mm -hmm. So um, co also means together. <coughs> Does that make sense? You're with and you're together. You're in order. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's work together. You guys, let's work together. Make sure that you're understanding all of this. Working together helps each other. All right? Don't forget to work together. Okay, so now let's go into this comma rule. The cat had soft, warm fur. Well, this takes a comma. Because doesn't it make sense? The cat had warm, soft fur. This right here, these adjectives are coordinate adjectives. Say coordinate. Coordinate. Co means with or together. And this means order. So they have the exact same weight. But look at this. The old innocent cat hid in the tree. See, this takes a comma. This right here is a subordinate word. Old should always be in front. Do you guys remember that? Old should be in front. So, because old should be in front, and if you can hear that the word needs to be in front, because this, this can make a little bit sense, the innocent old cat, but old should be placed in front. So that means innocent is a subordinate word. Sub means what? Smaller or below. Below, under, smaller. Exactly, Daniel. It means that, so that means it can't be before old. And this means order. So it's below this order. Okay, and this one is with and together means the same weight. Now look at this. This is an adjective. It's an art articles always go in the front. Boom. You can't say this. Old innocent the cat. Does that sound stupid? Or how about this? Old the innocent cat. See how you can't mix those up. It's, it sounds dumb. Yeah. Um, but this one, this old innocent cat. This, I always say demonstrative. I like the pronunciation of that word, but it actually is demonstrative. And I just don't like the pronunciation of that word. Um, so I say demonstrative. 
but I think you need to know that's not truly how you pronounce it. It's demonstrative, and I sound, think that sounds like a big old monster's coming at you. And anyways, this old innocent cat, demonstrative, or if you decide to de demonstrate it, but we probably shouldn't. Well, they come first. You can't say old this innocent cat. Does that make sense? This comes first. This, that, these, and those. Those are demonstrative. Oh, I don't like saying it like that. But um, I'm saying it for you. I would be still saying it like that with my kids because. Um, but they come first. This, that, these, and those. Say it. This, this that, that, these, these and those. those. Say it again. This, that, these, and those. They that come first. Cat. That old cat. Exactly. Okay. Old cat. The oldest innocent cat. Now, I, I, I'm the same way with here. I like to call these superlative because super makes me think it's the most, it's the highest. This is called superlative. So, to help my kids remember it's the most, I think of Superman. But it is called superlative, not superlative, okay? And comparative words. And superlative words are E-S-T. Comparative words are, what words? E-R. Now, most would be its very own word, but um, most and more. more. More is comparative, most is superlative, okay? <laughs> And so this, you need to remember, anything with the E-S-T on it, or if you're using the word most or more, you need to make sure that it comes first, before. And they don't take commas. You do not use commas in any of that. You, you use commas when there's two, and it's a coordinate, coordinate word. A larger orange beautiful cat. Now this right here is cumulative. This is kind of a harder word to say. It acts as a group of words and they do not take commas. Mm -hmm. Look at this, one, two, three, four. One big long thing. See how this one's only two. Four, three, right? They don't take commas if you use them like that. Remember that. Do they take commas if you have big groups of words like this? No. That's, that's an adjective. This means you're heaping it on. Cumulative, it's heaping things on. Are you heaping all these adjectives to describe this cat? Yeah, you are. So that's what, the, that's what this is. And they do not take commas. You need to remember that. They don't take commas, boys. Do they take commas? No. If you have lots of, of, if you have lots of adjectives, no. What if we did this? I mean, the soft, warm cat. Do, would that one take a comma? No, because then you have more than two. Now let's look at number two that I chose. And I think this is one of the easiest ones you can remember, except I have seen um, people miss these when they're correcting their work. Number two is a noun with a direct address. Daniel, hand me the scissors. Daniel, hand me the scissors. I'm directly addressing that to somebody. So see, right here, it starts it, and you put a comma right after, hand me the scissors, comma, Daniel, right? Now the comma goes before his name. Hand me the scissors, comma, Daniel, comma, so I can open the chocolate chips. See how it's in the middle right here? Paul, hand me the scissors. So, Paul, comma, hand me the scissors. Hand me the scissors, comma, Paul, right? Mm -hmm. Paul, go play the piano. Paul, comma, go play the piano. Does that make sense? Nilton, comma, go play the piano. Go play the piano, Nilton. So go play the piano, comma, Nilton. That's how you would do it. When you're directly addressing somebody, you put, however you're doing it, you would say the name, if it's at the beginning, you put the comma, and then say the rest. And this needs a period right here. And then, 
Hand me the scissors, comma, Daniel. Hand me the scissors, comma, Daniel, comma. See if it's in the middle, you comma around it. This is a noun that is being directly addressed, and that's how you write it on paper. Comma infinitives when used as a non-essential. What does, what does non mean? Not. Not. Essential. That means you don't need it. Not essential. What does non mean, Paul? Not. Not. So you need to remember what, if you can remember non, you think about non-fat, that's how I always remember it. There's no fat in your yogurt or your milk or whatever. Non means not essential. So here's a couple sentences. Um, now, remember, we're focusing on infinitives right here. Paul, comma, an avid cyclist, comma, watches YouTube videos to become a pro at the Red Bull Rampage. Here's an example of when it is an essential infinitive. So why do we have commas here? Why would this be comma right here? Because this is not an infinitive. We're featuring the infinitives, but why does this need commas? This is a true non-essential. Paul watches YouTube videos to become a pro at the Red Bull Rampage. This sentence, where's your infinitive? It always starts with to. Become. To become. This is your infinitive. And it doesn't make sense to take this out because he's, why is he watching YouTube videos? If you take all of this out, well, okay, Paul watches YouTube videos. So what? Do you see why? This cannot be, if you put a comma here, that tells you right there that this is a non-essential. And Paul watches YouTube videos, well, so what? He watches YouTube videos. You, you need that, the reason why he's doing it. So this needs to be in here. But here on this one though, Paul studies tricks on YouTube to become a better cyclist and now he rides much better and faster. So here, you don't need to have this one in here. This is a um, non-essential infinitive. Paul studies tricks on YouTube and now he rides much better and faster. So see how that makes sense? Um, why is he doing YouTube videos? Well, this tells you it's, it's because he wants to, to ride better and faster. So this one can be common. Now, if, you, if you're like, no, I want that to be absolutely um, important, then you don't comma it. If you're, but, and, and some of these, you know, if you're the writer or if you, um, or the editor or whatever, sometimes you just have to make your own decisions on those type of things with commas. Sometimes we use commas too much. Okay, so now look, number four, comma items in a series. This is the one that I, that's super easy to remember. They can be one word, they can be verb phrases, they can be um, subjects. Uh, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. They can be compound subjects. They can be compound verbs. But you need to do it. You need to put those commas if they have an item in a series. Now, here's an example on when you don't use the comma because this isn't an item in a series. Daniel, that's now with the direct address. Daniel, take your coat and hiking boots on the hike. There's only two here. You do not use the comma with two. If you have three or more, you use the comma, all right? And you can do that with verb phrases. You can do that with lots of different things. If you have the item in a series with three or more, you need to be using your commas. Does that make sense? Now, Paul, why is this comma here? This one is a noun with a direct address. Just because you have this comma in here doesn't mean you shouldn't be having other commas in your sentence. So Paul, comma, take your sleeping bag, coat, roasting sticks, and dinner on the camp out. Okay, so let's read this without me saying a comma. Paul, take your sleeping bag, coat, roasting sticks, and dinner on the camp out. See how these 
commas, force a pause, and you're able to understand what you're saying better. You're able to read it better, and your reader is able to understand things better. And this helps you understand you're directly addressing it to somebody else. And so it's really important to make sure your commas are in there because you can understand things a little bit better. So how many words do you have to have to make sure that you put the commas in? Three. Three. Or? More. More. How many do you have to have, Polly? Three or more. Three or more. Not only that, you need to have a coordinating conjunction. Boom. It doesn't matter. What are all the coordinating conjunctions? You need to make sure you have a coordinating conjunction that separates that. Most of the time, if you have an item in this series, it will be and. Not always. And also, if you decide not to do a comma, this is the other way that you can do it, but then you don't do a comma. Paul, take your sleeping bag and coat and roasting sticks and dinner. Then you don't use commas. But who wants to write and? It's monotonous. And it, doesn't, it just doesn't sound nice. Now, when you're really trying to emphasize something, you can keep saying and and emphasize it. Now, let's read it again with the commas so you can, you remember, this is an item in a series. See how this one does not take a comma. Paul, comma, take your sleeping bag, comma, coat, comma, roasting sticks, comma, and dinner on the camp out. Don't forget your coordinating conjunction on the very last item in a series. Don't forget that when you're writing. Okay, let's read it again. Daniel, read this. Paul, take your sleeping bag, coat, roasting stick, and dinner on the camp out. Good. Paul, you read it now. Uh, Paul, take your sleeping bag, coat, roasting sticks, and dinner on the camp out. Now, remember that this causes, a comma causes a soft pause. The periods, question mark, exclamation points, they, they cause a solid pause. And if you end up doing a semicolon, they push a little bit harder pause than the commas, but not as hard as the periods. The periods, you, it forces you to absolute have a rest. How many coordinating conjunctions do we have in the English language? Seven. Seven. Oh, seven. Okay, and your acronym for that is fanboys. And so if you're trying to figure out all of them, write fanboys down and then you can write underneath what all of your coordinating conjunctions are. But you just have to have one in there. So let's write those out. What is that? Uh, four. 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 And. And. Nor. Nor. But. But. Good job, Paul. Or. Or. Yet. Yet so. And so. That's your acronym. Make sure that you know those. That will help you. Remember what all of your coordinating conjunctions are. Now remember, co means with. And order means in order. Okay? Now, non-essentials. Now we're talking about just complete non-essentials. Before we talked about infinitive non-essentials, but now we're just talking about non-essentials in a sentence. They can be taken out without changing the idea of the sentence. So Daniel, carrying the heaviest backpack, hiked the fastest. So here, Daniel hiked to the fastest. Does it make sense to just say Daniel hiked the fastest? Now, well, maybe you as a writer say, well, I want them to know that Daniel carried the heaviest backpack and he hiked the fastest, so he was the strongest and the fastest. I want them to know that. But here, I'm saying, well, it's, that's kind of bragging. So Daniel hiked the fastest. I'm saying that that is a non-essential, and this makes sense all by itself. This is its main clause. Boom, main clause, main clause, this together, and this can come out. See how if it's in the middle of a sentence, Paul, how, 
you put it at the beginning and at the end. How about this one? Carrying the heaviest backpack, Daniel hiked the fastest. Now it's at the beginning, so you put the comma here. Now this right here is tricky. You have to make sure that you're understanding. Daniel needs to be, you need only need the comma here in this kind of a sentence if Daniel is the one doing the carrying. Daniel has to be the one doing the carrying, whatever is right here. Do you understand that? But this is non-essential. We don't have to have it right here. But, but you can say carrying the fastest backpack was hard. Then there would be no comma at all. But here, because you've changed that up, here is your main clause. Daniel liked the fastest. Does that make sense all by itself? Yes, we don't have to have that in there, so we comma it off. Now, this one also, and we'll go into this a little bit more. Um, there's a lot more to this kind of a sentence, but I just wanted to put it out there. Also right here, you guys, Daniel hiked the fastest, even though he carried the heaviest backpack. Now, why do you think we have a comma here, Dan? Yeah, so this can go by itself. Daniel hiked the fastest, or he carried the heaviest backpack. This one is kind of tricky. You can say, what do you think? No, 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 I actually want you to answer because that's how you learn. Is it a clause? It's a subordinate clause. Um, the reason why this one, there's different reasons why this one can be a comma. And let's talk about that. This one right here, you can say, all right, this doesn't matter right here. So it would need a comma because it's a non-essential. But here's another, and you would have to have the comma, and that would be the, the comma that is because it's a clause that starts it with a subordinating word. This one is not here because that's a subordinating word because it, you only start it, and, and your main clause, ha it has to be like this. A subordinate clause, comma, main clause, okay? Subordinate clause, main clause, comma. Main clause, subordinate clause, no comma. Does that make sense? So, you're not putting a comma in here because of that. We're going to say it's a non-essential. Now, let's say we take this out. Boop, 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 boop. And we put a comma right here. No. This is, then you could say, this doesn't even make sense without that. Daniel hiked the fastest, he carried the heaviest backpack. This is called a comma splice. And some sometimes it sounds okay to be doing that, but other times, it's considered a comma splice and it's incorrect. So now, this would be considered a comma splice if you do it like this, right? Now, you would either need to add the and, a coordinating conjunction, but this and he carried the heaviest backpack. We can do that. That would be 100% okay to do that with this comma. Or, the best way to fix that, not always, is just put a period here, capitalize this, and put a period here. Demo hiked the fastest, he carried the heaviest backpack. We have a subject and a verb. Subject and a verb. And this is called something else, and we'll go into it in a different lesson a little bit more. Main thing that we wanted to focus on right there is the non-essential, but that one was the bottom one could have been lots of different reasons why a comma could be forced there, okay? But most of the time, if you see a subordinate clause with the main clause, you have to comma that. Main clause, subordinate clause, you do not comma that. So that one with although was, mm, maybe we could put a comma there. If we thought it was a non-essential and it didn't need to be there, we could put the comma there. Mm -hmm. But if we thought it was essential, and we use the word although, we don't put the comma in there. That one is a little bit confusing. And we don't always, having commas, there are main comma rules that absolutely you have to, but then there's other times we're like, hmm, could that need a comma? Or maybe it doesn't need a comma. 
Anyways, we hope that you really like this lesson and we'll see you in the next lesson. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.